Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche, and I thought for Thanksgiving week, um, it would be good to share a story, uh, something I am very grateful for uh, in this 2023 growing season. So I'm going to share Brian and my um, adventures in having an occupied eastern screech owl nest box this year. So if you didn't see past episodes um, in Monday with Martha number 93, I talked about uh, the biology and ecology of eastern screech owls. And in Monday with Martha number 94, we demonstrated the installation of a screech owl nest box. So we put it up in early March of 2022. It took a whole year for them to find us, but in 2023, in late May, I heard the whinny call of adults. So I apologize in advance, um, the eastern screech owls tend to be most active at dusk and uh, that's when I observed them. So I was during the drought this spring watering my native plants very late at night, heard the whinny call and as I approached um, our nest box at dusk, barely enough light to film anything. Um, I saw the shadow of an adult fly in. I could hear them land on the box there. You could just see that shadow there and then the adult leaving. And then I heard squeaking noises from inside the box. So I stood quietly, watched, tried to film with my, my phone a little bit. There's another adult coming and going from the box. Um, but I realized, oh my goodness, the screech owls had found us and, uh, we have an active nest going at uh, the end of May. So it took us about a week, but we secured a wildlife uh, trail camera that was motion sensored and um, infrared, had an infrared sensor, so it would um, trigger on motion as well as changes in temperature to try to um, film activity in the nest box. So this tree in the foreground is about 20 feet. It is the closest one to the next box. So we rigged the trail camera to that. And unfortunately, I think it was a little far away. It kept triggering when our neighbors drove by and their headlights would um, set off uh, the camera. Although we did get lucky a couple of times, they drove by and we were able to see activity um, at the entrance of the, the nest box. So I believe this is one of the outlets uh, hanging out, looking around for mom or dad to uh, bring some prey in for dinner time. You can see that fun swinging owl head movement that they use to help them focus on what it is they're, they're trying to uh, see. And in this clip, you can see there are actually two sets of eyes. So I know we had at least two owlets successfully hatch in the nest box. And so um, life happened. We, we didn't really see or hear anything for a little bit. And then uh, right in mid-June, I happened to be um, just looking over into the woods and I saw a little like blob on the side of a tree and I'm like boy that's a funny looking trunk and when I got my uh, binoculars out I realized it was one of the I believe adult screech owls just based on um, the patterning and how defined the ear tufts are um, so uh, this individual was sitting there looking around from a, a low perch probably starting to hunt um, at dusk, we're about an hour before sunset here in mid-June. And these eastern screech owls are just so well camouflaged. If I hadn't grabbed my binoculars, grabbed the nicer camera that let me 
um, zoom in a little bit better. I, I may not have um, noticed them until I, again, uh, picked up on the adults doing their low whinny call. So I'm going to zoom out here and just show you the shape and size of that adult owl compared to the understory and overstory trees in uh, our woodlot next to our house. And then there is the nest box we mounted on a large multi-stem uh, eastern white pine. So they are pretty small and can be, can be hard to spot and find again with your camera to focus on. But Brian and I had such a great time. We spent over an hour this evening just standing in the woodlot and the adults would sit on low perches and... Um, fly around us and they would do very soft um, contact calls which I'll uh, play some sound for you next. And their calls are so soft, you think they're far away, but they kept surprising us by being only 10, 15, 20 feet away. So it was really special to be able to stand there and watch them hunt. They didn't seem particularly disturbed by us, but they were doing their thing um, exhibiting their, their characteristic uh, perching low and sitting and waiting for small mammals or other things to move below them and uh, doing their U-shaped flights where they would uh, leave their perch and swoop down, kind of flatten out their flight, and then swoop back up to a new perch nearby. And I loved just seeing, they have such a cute round little silhouette, almost no neck. Um, they are a pretty um, small owl. And they are one of the, if not the least picky about their um, habitat and their, their prey habits. They eat a lot of different things from small mammals to earthworms, insects, um, reptiles, and amphibians. And they'll occupy, as long as there are trees, all kinds of woodland habitats, even in very urban areas or suburban like our neighborhood and rural areas as well. So if you haven't tried putting up a nest box, I encourage you to do so. We had so much fun observing them this nesting season. I'll have you listen to one more clip of uh, some of their soft contact calls. So although we didn't see the fledgling owlets uh, this particular evening, um, we did enjoy watching the adults hunt. I was concerned, if you can see there in the vegetation, our uh, neighbor's uh, domestic cat was roaming around, and I was concerned because the parents were sticking so close that perhaps um, they were nearby and within reach too. So the evening ended with me chasing the neighbor cat <laughs> away, from, away from this area, but... Uh, it's a good reminder of why it's important to keep your cats indoors and away from wildlife. 
So because we didn't see the owlets, I wanted to give them plenty of time um, in case they hadn't fledged yet. So we didn't check on the box until early July. I just wanted to make sure everyone had made it out of the box and get it uh, cleaned up and ready for the fall. So uh, now is actually a great time to get uh, nest boxes up. The eastern screech owls and other birds and or squirrels will use them in the fall and winter and it gives the birds a chance to check them out and basically know about them for a nesting season to start in February and March. So you can see there were no, no outlet bodies. So I believe um, the two that we saw with the trail cam footage uh, did fledge and it at least made it out of the box. For details on nest box clean out, check out Mondays with Martha number 44. So we didn't really hear or see uh, the screech owls for about five months and then this November as we spent a couple of weekends managing autumn olive in the woodland understory you can see my loppers on the tree that we had the the trail cam mounted on I happened to look up and see a little face in the entrance to the box I noticed oh I can't see the dark uh, entrance hole and that's because one of the adult screech owls was back roosting in the box. And I wasn't the only one who noticed the uh, songbirds, in particular the tufted titmice and chickadees, noticed him or her as well. They're mobbing them. Bunch of tufted tip my chewing them out. As soon as the songbirds dispersed, he or she popped their little face back out. I think um, it likes to perch just hanging on to the door and having its little face out in for a, a sunny nap at the at the end of the day and before uh, commencing more hunting. I was surprised at how tolerant it was of all the noise. I mean, we had the chainsaw going, the neighbors were mowing and sawing in the driveway next door. So other than the, the song birds, um, Nothing really seemed to disturb uh, this eastern screech owl. It would occasionally look around watching the chipmunks and the squirrels scurry around across the woodland floor, but it was very content with all the suburban noise going on around it to just uh, take a snooze on a, on a fall afternoon. So uh, thanks for letting me share our adventures with uh, the eastern screech owls this year. I hope this inspires you to think about where you might be able to put up uh, your own nest box and, and try to provide habitat for these cute little critters. Uh, just as a reminder, um, you do wanna put these nest boxes either on a live tree that's as least as wide as the box um, and uh, make sure that it's 10 to 30 feet uh, up in the air if you are overly concerned with uh, predators the potential for predators you can post mount these and provide a predator guard underneath um, set that post 10 feet from any uh, launching point it's good to put up multiple boxes they'll use them as alternate roost sites or if a nest fails they can um, move to a completely new nest box to start over in the spring and those uh, screech owl nest boxes should be at least a uh, hundred feet apart um, out of the wind they can face any direction but east is nice for um, morning sun and it's good to have it near uh, branches uh, so that the owlets can crawl out before they 
learn how to fly. With that, I will wish you luck attracting screech owls to your own backyard and uh, hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and an excellent nap afterwards. Take care and have a good week.